This is Top Gamer 007 here. And before we get started, the VG Bulletin, the link to all news articles and timestamp is going to be in the description below. And let's get started. So, let's get started with three Dragon Quest news. Based on the first news article, based on Nintendo Everything, Japan just had one of its biggest weeks in a long while in terms of gaming sales. Dragon Quest XI finally launched to a huge success. Co Console-wise, the sales of all 3DS systems combined sold 417.62% more than last week. Again, part of was due to the release of Dragon Quest XI. Square Enix also put out a special liquid metal slime new 2DS XL design, which was no doubt purchased by many consumers. As for software, Dragon Quest XI on the 3DS sold 1.149 million units with a sell-through rate of 75%. However, even when combined of the PS4 version, that's 950,000 copies, for a combined total of 2.099 million, it doesn't match up to Dragon Quest IX. That game came out only on the DS and sold 2.3 million copies in its first week. The same goes for Dragon Quest VIII, which sold 2.1 million copies in its first week. Every day, people is buying Dragon Quest XI, and I know it was possible because Japanese, Japan, is a Dragon Quest co country compared to Final Fantasy, like in the West. But 76% of all shipments in a week? Square Enix is doing good, man. Real good. That's a lot of money Square Enix is gaining. I recently even learned that Dragon Quest games in Japan don't have voice acting, apparently. And I hope the localized version of Dragon Quest XI most likely do will have the, the British voice acting that I love from Dragon Quest VIII. Just remember, Dragon Quest XI is releasing in the West in 2018. They also announced that Dragon Quest I, Dragon Quest II, Dragon Quest III is releasing on the 3DS in Japan later this month. Oh my god, it's crazy. It's a lot of Dragon Quest news. But I'm calling it now. This might be the year of Dragon Quest in Japan, but next year, Dragon Quest XI is going to be releasing in the West. And next year is going to be the West year, well, the Western audience year of Dragon Quest. And all these games that's being announced for, for Japan is going, that includes Dragon Quest Builders 2. Japan announced is going to be announced in 2018, right after Dragon Quest XI. And I expect Dragon Quest XI to release, I don't know, maybe, I think July would be good, the same time as in Japan, around the same time, a year after. Well, we can wait and see. Let's move on to some Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild news. A new update was announced for, for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nintendo is delivering version 1.3.1 to all players. That includes Wii U and Nintendo Switch. The official patch for version 1.31, 1.3.1, are as follows. All right, we have fixed the issue in Pack One, the Master Trials of the Expansion Pass, in which defeating certain enemies for Kiltian was not counted towards completion when playing in Master Mode. In-game items can now be obtained from launching the new software from attaining articles distributed through a new news channel. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild tips from the wild, which can be accessed through the news on the home menu. The channel is expected to open August 9, 2017. That's going to be tomorrow of this recording. But remember that Remember this, um, Wii U owners, you don't got this. I don't know if they're gonna do some Miiverse thing, but we don't, you don't got the news channel. Depending on your game progress and location, certain items may not be attainable. Various fixes to improve game. This is great. They are fixing bugs that 
a lot of bugs that's in Breath of the Wild. But I'm here waiting patiently for DLC pack 2, for that story DLC. When I got, when I get all the DLC packs, then I'd be interested in Master Mode and play the game again. In my opinion, Master Mode came too soon. I just beat Breath of the Wild. Just beat the game. A month, month or month and a half later, they said, Master Mode, here it is. And I'm like, I'm not gonna expect me to play the game again. Like, ARMS is coming up. Like, Splatoon 2 is coming up. Like, Nintendo. No, you want me to, I thought you wanted me to play your other games. You want me to buy your other games. Like, come on. Another 130 hour run, Nintendo? That's too much, man. That's too much. Let's move on to some new news. Um, where Game Freak had an interview with Game, Game Informer. All right, Game Freak is excited to see many ways people playing Switch. We'll try to make a Pokemon game that meet expectations. Game Informer latest issue contains a significant feature about Pokemon. The magazine visit Game Freak offices in Japan and reminisce about the franchise early days, that various entries and more. Switch was one of the topics discussed at E3 in June. It was announced that the brand new Pokemon game is planned for the system. Game Freak J Jesuda, Masu Masuda <laughs> and Shinuchu, <laughs> I gotta butcher these names. Aori both spoke about the Switch and making a game on the platform. Masuda started with the following, quote unquote, what I'm really curious about and really excited to see will be the main way that people play the Switch. Will it be a home for the most part? Will it be out and about? I think that's going to depend on where the person lives maybe. Depending on the country, maybe the main style of playing will be different. As we've been saying a lot, we always focus on when deciding the games, thinking about how the player is going to enjoy it and what kind of experience they're going to have. I'm really just kind of excited to see where the main style of playing is going to land. Masuda also said the situation is definitely different this time. Since Game Freak isn't just moving between handhelds, Switch is a, also a console. Quote unquote, just playing it at home is kind of a little bit different than playing portable systems we made games up to now, he added. Iori, Iomori, I'm trying, don't, I'm, I'm trying my best not to butcher this name, okay? Close out the Switch talk with the following. It is definitely fun to see that, but at the same time, it's definitely a lot of pressure. So we're going to do our best to create the great game that answers those expectations. I cannot wait to play Pokemon on the Switch. When they announced Pokemon Tournament DX for the Switch and a new 3DS Pokemon game, but not a Switch version, I was going to boycott Pokemon Company until they announced a true Pokemon RPG. But when they announced the Pokemon game for the Switch at E3, I told myself, wow, that boycott ended real quick, like Sonic Speed Supersonic, real fast. Now I'm planning to buy Pokemon Tournament, Ultra Sun, Ultra, well, not Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon I'm going to get because I bought Pokemon Moon and I'm not going to buy two of them. I buy Pokemon Moon and I just stick with Moon, so I'm just going to stick with Ultra Moon for my 3DS. Here, this news gave me some, gave me music through my ears, man. Because this tells me that they're pressured, 100% pressured by fans. Because this Pokemon game was, an uh, HD Pokemon game was, like, every fan wanted this game. Like, a $60 Pokemon game. Something huge that everyone to have. Open world game. Pokemon that you can see in the wild. You don't need to go in grass, random encounters. You just see them. Like, Dragon Quest. Like, you see them. No random encounters. Like that. We always wanted that. And... It's possible. They, I hope they put all these expectations that fans want in this game. And Masuda, you better make a game to exceed all fans' expectation. Well, but I'm just kidding. So let's move on to VG Bulletin Mini. We got two bullets to shoot through, so let's get started. 
Rayman Legend Definitive Edition for the Nintendo Switch file size is revealed. It's a whopping 2.9 gigabytes. And let's move on to another Ubisoft news. Ubisoft also revealed the frame rate and resolution of Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. They also said that the resolution is 900p and the frame rate is 30 frames per second. So let's move on to the last news article for today. Nintendo stated today that they are going to stream Mario Odyssey, Metroid Samus Return, and most importantly of all, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 at Gamescom. Plus more Nintendo Switch and 3DS games. Nintendo Everyday made a great article that uh, everything that Nintendo says, quote unquote. Nintendo has plenty of plans lined up for Gamescom later this month. Even if you're not attending the expo, there's a lot of there will be plenty to see thanks to intensive live streams. First, Super Mario Odyssey will be appearing on August 23rd, along with a, along with a fresh gameplay. Producer Yaka Ki Kakazumi will be stopping by. The game will be streamed at the following times: 6 a.m. Pacific time. 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. in the UK, and 3 p.m. in Europe, in general Europe. Metroid Samus Return is up next on August 24th. Producer Yuko, Yashio, Sakamoto, and Jose Luis Martinez, creative director of developer Mercury uh, Steam, will be taking, play, taking to stage to showcase the game. Nintendo is also promising live presentation of previous announced tower titles for the Switch and 3DS. That includes Silver Black Chronicles 2, Fire Emblem Warriors, and more. We'll be getting the full schedule in the coming weeks. For what's to be playable at Gamescom, Nintendo lineup includes Switch, Super Mario Odyssey, Pokemon Tournament DX, Fire Emblem Warriors, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Hearts, and odd, this is really odd, ARMS and Splatoon 2. 3DS, oh, 3DS, Nintendo didn't forget about you guys. Mario and Luigi's Superstar Saga, plus Browser Minions, Monster Hunter Stories, and Metro Samus Returns. I cannot wait until Gamescom to see more Mario Odyssey and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I hope they display a release date for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. If they don't show it now, when are they going to show it? Maybe on a Nintendo Direct? In my opinion, Gamescom make more eye Gamecoms have more eyes, so so Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will have more popularity, like more eyes on it than a Nintendo Direct. Because the Nintendo Direct are focusing on Nintendo fans. And Gamescom is focusing on everyone else, but everything else plus that includes Nintendo and non-Nintendo fans that are going to be watching Gamescom. So in my opinion, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 should be, the release date should be, should be announced at Gamescom. Well, that's my opinion. I would like your opinion of all these news articles in the comment section below. So yes, it's about time to end my video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like videos like this one. This is Dot Gamer 007, and I see you in the next one. Peace.